BBC School Report 2013, reporting live from St Crispin School in Wokingham. I'm Holly Sargent. I'm Alex Tigg. And I'm Rachel Halton. Top stories today. We have a look at Comet Relief here at St Crispin's. We take a sneak peek backstage at Chicago, our major production this year. And we take a tour around a newly built state-of-the-art science block. Being the head of a secondary school must be hard, but being new head, for sure, must be even harder. This is Megan Cox and Holly Hayward. We've been to see Ginny Rhodes, our new head, to see how she's been settling in. Are you enjoying your position of being head teacher here at St Crispin's? I am really enjoying it. I'm very happy to be here and it's such a lovely school and I felt so particularly welcome. How do you think the students here differ to those at your other school? I think they're friendlier, warmer, more optimistic and I really enjoy the fact that everybody talks to me when I walk around the school and that people speak really well to each other. What's your future vision for the school? Well, I mentioned before that the school vision is excellence for all. And for me, what that really means is that I want the opportunity for every student in this school and every member of staff to really excel. The school motto is excellence for all, and that's what I want. I want the, every subject and every experience and every opportunity at the school to be good. So, exciting times for St Crispin's. We wish Miss Ginny Rhodes all the best in what she is trying to achieve. This is Megan Cox and Holly Hayward, BBC News Report 2013, St Crispin's School. In UK news, a Dorset town with the highest amount of pensioners living alone have started an organisation. The organisation is a befriending service to tackle feelings of isolation. A villager explained, we have a massive problem in Christchurch with couples who retire down here. One of the partners unfortunately dies and we end up with an older person on their own, away from the family and long-term friends. On a much more cheery note, All around the country, people raise money for comic relief. Here at St Crispin's on Friday, students arrived in non-uniform and paid £1 to do so. Also, Year 7 brought in their best one-line jokes. The teachers decided which was their favourite. Another thing that happened was the wacky mile. Pupils dressed up and tried to do the mile in the wackiest way possible. Earlier, here at St Crispin's, Hannah went and spoke to the head of the charity committee about raising money for comic relief. Who has got involved with raising money? Um, the head team's got involved and in kind of the whole school as well through um, the Mufti Day and the other events like Wackiest Way to Do a Mile, getting the whole school involved. Um, what have you been doing to raise money? Um, to raise money, like I said, we do a Mufti Day, that gets the whole school involved, get them to raise a pound, um, and then the wackiest way gets anyone who wants to, that's a little bit more money. Um, why have you chosen to support Comic Relief? Um, comic Relief is awesome because it helps people in the UK, but it also helps people around the world, like in Africa, so it's a really good charity that helps everyone. Um, how have you got so many people involved? Um, well, Mufti Days are pretty easy to get the whole school involved because everyone likes wearing their own clothes and then something fun like the wackiest way to do a mile that's another way to get lots of people involved because it, again it's fun. Thank you for that report Hannah. Another exciting event happening here at St Crispin's is our production of the popular musical Chicago. Now we go to our report about this upcoming event. How did you choose the cast? We had two audition nights. On the Tuesday we auditioned the main cast, the principal cast and dancers and then on the Wednesday we had a massive audition where we had everybody come along that wanted to be chorus. Why do you think it's going to be better than last year's play? Uh, I, don't think it's, I don't think it's going to be better than a better play but I think every year we build on the performance from the year before and we just improve naturally year on year and I think I think it is a better show than We Will Rock You um, and I think the performance this year we're just getting more more and more talent developing so yeah we always try and outdo the year before and make it better and better. What other ideas did you have for this year's production? Uh, we had lots, Chicago was always our number one but we also had um, Kiss Me Kate which is quite an old musical and we were looking at things like The Wizard of Oz but we really wanted to do Chicago but we had to wait for it to come out the West End so that we could get the rights. 
How long does a show take to put together? It's about six months from start to finish. It's a very long time. Lots of planning before then even. So to be honest, we start thinking about it the year before so that we know exactly what we want to do and can get it all planned and done properly. Are you planning to use all the songs from Chicago? No, we're not actually. We're dropping, I think, two or three songs um, that we just don't need and also one of them's quite rude, so that had to go because it's a school production. So, perhaps Chicago isn't so far from home after all. This is Hannah Jeffrey, BBC News School Report 2013, St Crispin's. That is going to be a good performance, don't you think so, Holly? Yes, I do, Rachel, but we have something more current to talk about now, which is a new fight book that has just been opened. We are now going over to Dominic, who has spoken to Mrs Richards, who is one of the science teachers here at St Crispin's. So, does the science block meet and above your expectations? Well, I've been in the very fortunate position of having an old classroom that looked out over the construction site I obviously can remember when this was just a part of the playing field and the tennis courts, but each day as I came into work I could see a change in how the building has grown uh, from just a few bricks and a pile of mud to this superb building we've got here. Um, once you're inside there's a superb feeling of airiness and lightness and space. Um, there's obviously things that aren't right, we haven't got one or two basics, um, towels, uh, towel hooks, we haven't got any uh, things to hang clocks on, uh, little things like that can be very soon put right, but the vast majority of this building is really superb and I hope that students will appreciate how lucky they are being able to work in somewhere like this. Also, what is your favourite part of the new science book? I don't have a favourite part particularly, um, but I do think the overall feeling is one of big air airiness and, and big spaces. I love the uh, periodic table on the glass outside. Um, there's lots of things that uh, students can benefit from. I do like the lovely halls, the corridors that, that go along, much easier than going in and out of the old buildings. Thank you, Ms. Richards. This is Dominic Keast, BBC School Report 2013, St. Crispin School. Thank you, Dominic. Now it's time to go over to Sam and Jack who can tell you what's going on around the world. Welcome to the World News. We will tell you the main world headlines. I am Jack Boxley reporting for World News. Here is Sam Jones. In the UK, the unemployment rises to 2.52 million. Lots of companies have gone bust lately and lots of people are losing their jobs rapidly. Labour calls for an economic U-turn. Shadow Chancellor Ed Balls calls on George Osborne to make a swift U-turn on the economy. Obama, the US President, travelled to West Bank for talks with Palestinian leader Mahmoud Abbas a day after making a trip to Israel as US leader. Thank you, Sam and Jack, for informing us about what's happening around the world. What is the BBC School News Report all about? BBC News School Report is a wonderful initiative by the BBC for schools around the country. I think about a thousand schools, or just over a thousand schools in fact, are taking part. And this school has taken part now for a few years, but we've not been quite so ambitious before. And it's about students experiencing what it's like to work in a sort of news slash media um, context and they're reporting on um, issues that they think are important to them. How did you choose all the students? Well I chose the students from the gifted and talented register at this school which is quite large because I thought that this project would give the students the challenge and wonderful opportunities um, to really explore the media, how the media works, and also to develop skills like report writing, to actually develop interviewing skills and all sorts of things that they'll find important later on, um, either in their schoolwork or in their um, chosen careers. Did they do well? Well, I have to confess that I think that they've done absolutely brilliantly but I'll let you be the judge of that. Finally, over to Mars with the weather. Hello. Over the next few days, there will be a mix of weather. Today, it is going to be cloudy and cold, mixed with a few showers of rain. By 12pm, the rain should have stopped, leaving significant cloud cover. 
so it won't be particularly warm, a typical English bow. Over the next few days, the weather will be patchy at best, reaching heights of 6 degrees in certain areas. In summary, the temperature will be quite low over the next couple of days, so wrap up warm and expect rain and sun disruption. In Belfast, the temperature will reach heights of 5 degrees, whereas Edinburgh will be a bit chillier, only managing to reach 3 degrees. Manchester, much like Belfast, will reach 5 degrees, while Cardiff will reach 4 degrees. London will be slightly warmer, however, reaching heights of 6 degrees. The government have issued amber weather warnings and told us to expect lots of rain and possible flooding in the south coast of England. Thank you, Miles. Now this concludes our BBC News School Report 2013. I'm Holly. I'm Alex. And I'm Rachel, reporting live from St Crispin's School.